Hey guys, it's Q, and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel, and we are here with me again in handheld fashion to uh, look at Info Magazine, an amazing magazine. Let's go ahead and uh, open this up, and the first ad, of course, we see is a bunch of great classic Amiga games. Isn't that great? And then, of course, the GVP Series 2 A500 HD+. Isn't that beautiful? That's not what the video's about. Just read the title of the video. This computer will rule the world. Okay, so what I'm doing today is I'm gonna kind of give you like a state of the union for Hold and Modify Amigas. And you've seen some of these lately, and we've got the CD32 and the 1000, nothing much has really changed with them. They work flawlessly, they're perfect. And I don't really have much more to say about them for now. The CD32 still remains the best way to play games with WHD load for me. Up and running quick on the old 1080S, 1084S, sorry. And uh, we have a lot of fun with it. Down here, we've got my trusty Goodwill Asus laptop. It's a cheap Windows, Vista era laptop that I've upgraded to Windows 10. And as you can see attached to it is my USB blaster. This is what I use to update the various vampire products, the Apollo products that I have, as well as MAME and some other things that aren't related to the Amiga. This little laptop handles all of that stuff. I like it because it's got USB 3, decent internal Wi-Fi, and USB 2.0. And that's really critical, having that 2.0 port, because some devices don't like the 3.0. Over here, we've got our trusty, familiar Amiga 500, and it has the Apollo Firebird cooking away in it. Recently updated, I've made a video about that. You can check through my playlist to see that. What I've got up here is I have solved one of the problems that I had exposed in the last video I made. The video I made about this last time was generally uh, gushing, overwhelming, overwhelmingly positive. And one of the things I ran into was art department professional, of course, just wouldn't see any of the native Amiga modes. I would launch art department professional and it would only show uh, the Saga or the RTG modes. And it would kind of bum me out. It made an otherwise perfectly transparent Amiga 500 upgraded system a little quirky. But going in here and editing these lines where it says V control to end if, Rem all of this out. What this does is forces a screen mode and a monitor selection for the Apollo. Getting rid of this allows you to do what you've always been able to do, which is pick your own screen modes in Amiga Workbench. And in this case, not only am I able to pick my own screen modes, I am actually pre-launching the Vampire GFX, which is the Saga driver, their RTG driver, and I'm doing NTSC instead of PAL. This host Amiga 500 system is an NTSC Amiga. And the Firebird, now I cannot confirm this, so I don't want you to get too excited. The Firebird seems to be slaved to its host system, meaning maybe they engineered it to be PAL, but it has to get its timings from somewhere, and the timings of my host 500 are NTSC. So when I boot up, I was using a PAL monitor because that's what they set it to and I was having some issues, but others have learned that if the host system is NTSC, that the timing seemed to be NTSC. So why are you running a PAL monitor and dealing with the grief over there in the, the land of uh, Yankees? So sure enough, I went ahead and activated that NTSC monitor and voila, I have a accelerated Amiga 500 with an Apollo Firebird that seems to be using good old Yankee timings. So as you can see booted up here, if I go to preferences, get in there and let's get down to screen mode. You can see that I have all of the Saga modes. This is what we saw before, all of the RTG modes. And if we scroll up, you've still got the PAL modes. Those are, as far as I can tell, they're kind of unavoidable, even though my startup sequence does not have this monitor assigned. And you might ask, well, maybe in good old devs monitors, there's a PAL monitor. So we'll go in there. And we'll check, and sure enough, there isn't. It's just the Vampire and the NTSC. So I'm not sure where 
this PAL is coming from other than it's just hardware programmed into the Vampire's AGA graphics chipset. That may be what's going on. So if you go up here and you pick high res laced, and we'll leave it at 256 colors, click use. Now, if I go ahead and say use, it's not gonna work. And I showed this in the last video. It's because this toolbar is running down here. So we gotta click on it. Let's hit cancel on this. Come down here, click on this. Click cancel on the dock. You might say, well, why don't you just kill this dock and not have to do this? Well, you don't have to do this that often. And I like that dock. It's actually pretty, uh, it's pretty useful. So we'll go back here, NTSC, high res laced, and we'll click use. And here we go. We are in the glorious high res interlaced flicker grossness of a NTSC, but it works. More importantly, we can put this back into a nice, beautiful 800 by 600 Saga screen. There we go, nice and stable. And now when we go over here to run Art Department Professional, the last time we ran this, when I went to go set render screen, all we saw were Saga modes and I got really depressed. <laughs> but now you see all the NTSC modes, which means I can now use Fred to properly compile Ham and Ham 8 and DCTV animations with Art Department Professional. You need to have access to those monitor modes, otherwise Ad Pro is not gonna be able to compile those animations. So that's fixed, which uh, pretty much makes this, as I said in the last video about it, my ultimate 500. This is awesome. I've got two megs of chip memory. I've got 112 megs of other memory. <laughs> and uh, RTG graphics, and it works lovely. So let's move on to the uh, next one. Now, this is my Amiga 1200. It has a TF-1260. So other than that, um, it does have a Scan Plus AGA, which gives me the VGA output and that TF-1260. That TF-1260 is giving me the real 68060 with, um, what was it? Yeah, like 128 megs or so of RAM. Now this 1200 is running 3.2.1 workbench, but it only has the 3.2 ROMs. I am working on getting the actual 3.2.1 ROMs in here, but they're not really that critical. So what I wanted to show here is the last time we saw this 1200, we had the beautiful DCTV demonstration, my little monitor down here. A fellow user on the Facebook Commodore Amiga group, Polly, hooked me up with the DCTV 1.1c update, which allowed me to get the software that will run and not crash. It also introduced a couple neat things. So we go to this pixel adjust tool, which did not come with the original software, at least as far as I could tell. And what this does, it lets you twiddle the knob that I talked about, the pixel adjust knob, until you get your proper colors. So as you can see here, we've got our proper colors. That looks like red, that looks like green, this looks like blue, this looks like yellow. Unless of course you are colorblind, but it's all working and that's fantastic. Love that. If we go to DCTV, we can launch the program now. And we can go over to paint. And then down here, we'll click load. I'll put us down here where we can actually see what we're doing. And now when I click and I load that beautiful marine land image. It displays and doesn't crash. And sit here and look at this image all day. Isn't that great? Let's just stare at this image all day. We won't do that. But you know, I wanted to see if we could load some other ones. How about St. Helens Blast? Is that going to work? Well, I think this is funny. <laughs> That's St. Helens Blast. Now, these are not images I made. These actually came with the DCTV. Can't say if they officially licensed the uh, 1701D from Star Trek The Next Generation, but it's blowing up Mount St. Helens there. So, yeah, this amazing DCTV 1.1C software works great on the Workbench 3.2.1-1200, no crashing. Thank you, Polly. And then I do have other Amigas I could show you. I've got the Vampire Standalone down there, but nothing's really moved too much on that. In fact, most of the updates to the Vampire Standalone mirror the Firebird. So I have not really done much with this lately because my focus has been on this Firebird for the 500. Because this one, of course, is a more integrated Amiga product where I get to use the Amiga's 
amazing uh, other ports and hardware, whereas this cannot be underestimated. I know some folks get really fussy about this, but what the people that get fussy about, they forget that 20, 30 years from now, all of this stuff is gonna be completely shattered and in pieces and not work. I mean, maybe somebody will be out there trying to make new motherboards and new capacitors, but we could actually theoretically get to a point where even the little components that make these up that we can get, that we barely have access, access to nowadays, it might just vanish. And the custom chips especially could become a real problem. So I don't wanna underestimate how important products like this are that can bring the Amiga as a hardware box all on its own. Something separated from a PC, Mac, or Windows or Linux, just its own little box that's an Amiga. And that's what I think is so special about these little boxes and that's why I appreciate it. Um, it's just, I have not been able to get to it lately because I've been really busy with that Firebird. The other computer you don't see here. So we've got the we got the Vampire standalone, we've got the 1200, we've got the 500, we've got the 1000 and the CD32. What's not here? Well, the Amiga 3000. And sadly, as you saw from my Amiga 3000 series video, uh, it did give up the ghost and I did have to send it back over to uh, John Hertel. And he's a very busy man, but he is uh, promising to get to it and get it up and running again. And I have uh, numerous uh, expansion cards and neat little toys I wanna show you all for the Amiga 3000, because it does have a lot of fun stuff you can plug into it and play with. But uh, for now, these are the uh, computers I have and what they're doing. They are working, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, update. This is where we're at. This has been the uh, State of the Union for Hold and Modify and the current status of all the Amigas. Thank you.